Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Economic Empowerment Podcast. And I'm going to share with you the second poster I saw, which is about uh, European startup migration to the U.S. And um, which the U.S. migrants actually get way more VC fundings because they innovate more and could achieve a bigger scale to exit. And a common theme for U.S. migrants, um, U.S. Mig uh, migration uh, startup companies, is that they do not increase revenue for years, and they incur higher losses and no higher exit likelihood. And U.S. funding advantage explains majority of innovation and scale differences, which suggests that European VC finding market is the main obstacle to startup performance rather than its product in exit markets. So what are the motivation for this paper, which I find extremely interesting because as entrepreneurs, we are starting to expand in a global scale and that looking at company, you know, from Europe is significantly different than here because of the cultural differences. And the trillion dollar question by Peter Thiel was like, why no Silicon Valley and no big tech firms in Europe? And because Europe is largely missing out on innovation and eight of the 10 world top companies are VC based US Asian tech firms, European also lacks in producing unicorns because a lot of US unicorns are from US like 51% and 31% from Asia and 13% from Europe. There are no systemic evidence on European disadvantage as startup performance so which this paper basically compares the performance of migrants and stayers. And due to the positive selection into migration, comparison gives an upper bound of the US effects on startups. And this is uh, in the, uh, this is by Stefan Weick by the, I cannot pronounce that school, but if you wanna check his paper out, I think it's a really interesting read. So the data collected here is from startups from 17 European countries which are 11,000 startups and 5% moved to US. And as we can see, let me just move myself here, that there are startups that stay in Europe and a startup that moves to the US, categorized by these two lines. And you can see that start startup that moves to the US can achieve significantly more VC race than the European ones that who stays in Europe. And the patents as well, the, the patents increase way more. You can see there's a significant difference. And the revenue effect is not too huge until eight years after migration, which you can see the huge spike. And I think this is where European um, countries starts lacking support, government lacking support to entrepreneurship, because after eight years, if government doesn't produce enough support, the company is going to be around the same. But U.S. provides plenty of support to those companies and just they can achieve huge growth. And U.S. migrants, though, like migrant um, startup companies experience much higher losses, as, as we can see that this is all negative until like somewhere in the 14th, 15th year, which I find that extremely interesting. And we can look at the US like migration does not increase the likelihood to reach an IPO exit. And which you can see is around the same type of thing. And um, the IPO though, I think U.S. has a larger chance of getting that APO exit rate than the than United Kingdom by just a little bit, which is not too crazy either. So what did we learn is that main startup disadvantage in Europe is less funding and lower tolerance for losses, and product and exit markets do not hinder European startup development much, if at all. And important for policymakers, boosting European entrepreneurship is more straightforward than previously thought. Instead of efforts across markets, it focused on understanding issues in the VC market. Thank you so much. And I'll share with you guys the third one later on. See ya. And I think this is a really great written paper. And you guys should check it out. And this is the email. And this is the name of the paper. See you in the next episode.